Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Ivana. Thank you for tuning into our live. We are here at AFIT doing our final year exhibition. So if you're in the Book of Jello area, do drop by. We'll be starting with our advertising and brand management course. First, we have Roshni. How are you doing, Roshni? I'm good. Thank you for having me here. It's great to have you here. So Roshni has two projects to show us. Let's see the video. Hi, my name is Hanna Roshni. I am 21 years old from Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. I am an advertising and brand management student uh, with industry experience in account management, content creation, and social media. My project title, Support Local, is a public awareness campaign proposal showcasing the local food tourism industry. After the effects of the NCO, small businesses needed a boost to get their businesses up and running again. The proposed client is Tourism Malaysia and the idea of this campaign is to develop a food trail map throughout the country. My second project is called Plant Life and it's a proposed Instagram page about self-sustainability and living a more eco-friendly and healthy life. The page is a guideline on how to grow your own herbs and the benefits one can gain from them. My interests include nature, photography and travel and I decided to draw from these inspirations for my final year project. I hope you enjoyed that short preview of my portfolio. I would love to get in touch with you so please feel free to contact me. Wow Roshni, those are some really interesting projects. I'm interested in travel and nature as well. Mm -hmm. Could you tell me a little bit more about support local Malaysia as well as tourism Malaysia and how they're related? So basically, um, what we had to do for our project was that we had to create a public awareness campaign and we could choose any topic of interest. And for me, because being stuck at home during MCO, I decided to go with um, promoting the tourism industry because a lot of small businesses actually went out of business. Mm -hmm. um, so why I chose Tourism Malaysia specifically as the proposed client for this campaign is because um, this year was supposed to be Visit Malaysia 2020 and um, there was a lot of preparation for it. Um, different hotels, uh, different small businesses throughout the country all um, started preparing in expectation for the huge amount of tourists coming into the country. But what happened was that COVID-19 happened and the whole um, campaign Visit Malaysia 2020 kind of um, broke down. So what I wanted to do was actually help the client uh, restart the domestic tourism industry again to encourage people to travel locally, maybe even if it's you know taking a short road trip on weekends. And I think it's something that all of us can participate to actually help out the client. That's really mm -hmm. interesting. So how would the users go about using this campaign? Um, so what I have proposed for this campaign was to actually develop a food trail map. You know, growing up, I really enjoyed uh, scavenger hunts. And I think, you know, um, posting like different locations around the country where, um, you know, different fresh food is actually sold can actually encourage people to visit these small locations. And um, so what I've done is that I created a Facebook group because, you um, Facebook groups are more, I chose that instead of a Facebook page because um, Facebook groups are more community based and, you know, not only the admin can post, anyone can post and share their knowledge. And also to um, to add on to that, I created a Snapchat part of the campaign where Snapchat has this feature called SnapMap and you can actually see different um, places where your friends are traveling so you can actually zoom out on the map and see where they are visiting in the country so i actually um created a filter for that and also stickers so they can decorate their snapchat stories and then the final thing was uh, a postcard because tourism malaysia the client um they are really into uh, sending out postcards so i thought you know i haven't received a postcard in a while especially mm -hmm. during mco no one was traveling so if someone receives a postcard nowadays um, maybe they would realize like, hey, you know, my loved ones are traveling. Why not I take a step out of the house and also travel as well? That's yeah. really cool. So for your second project, the Plant Life project, could you tell me a little bit more about how you would develop that project? Okay, so for my second project that was um, based on a competition brief by the A-Design competition, and it was to uh, create a social media sort of project. Um, 
So I wanted to take uh, something different and actually feature local Malaysian herbs and plants that um, maybe not many people on Instagram would know about. So um, what I would take it further, because right now I have just created uh, proposed Instagram posts and videos. Mm -hmm. um, I realized in advertising, one thing that I've learned is that nowadays, um, you know, not many uh, companies actually, they, what customers really need is that two-way engagement because um, if the customers respond to the company and the brand doesn't respond back, then the customers don't feel encouraged anymore. So I really right. want that two-way engagement. And what would happen was that um, maybe in the future, I could propose workshops to actually encourage people to uh, participate and go out and participate in these workshops to learn more about these herbs. So I think that two-way engagement is very important, especially mm -hmm. in digital advertising, because it's not just about the customers reading the posts online. They also are expecting the brands to respond back to them. Some interaction. Yeah, sure. some, some response back to them so that we can actually visit again. So yeah, I think that would be really important for the okay. project. Uh, Grace says, lovely. Thank you, Grace, for that comment. So Roshni, those were some amazing projects. Oh, we have Happy Cathy as well, who says, very well done. Thank I you, agree. everyone. OK, so thank you, Roshni, for those. Um, oh, another another comment saying, awesome, from Dean Chan. Thank you, Dean. Thank you, Dean. So um, we will move on to uh, the next uh, ABM student. Thank you, Roshni, so much for sharing. Thank you. Oh, Hi, we're back with our next ABM student, Han. Han, how are you doing? I'm doing great. That's great. So Han has three projects to share with us. Let's see the videos. Hello, everyone. My name is Dong Han Nguyen, and you can call me Han. Nice to meet you. I'm a final year advertising and brand management student. I'm a graphic designer who loves minimalist and simple style design. And here are the final year projects that I have done during my final year. The first project is based on a competition entry by A Design Award. It's a photography series featuring the depression among high school students nowadays. Based on my research, depression among high school students are serious because of issues such as study exam, family pressure, peer pressure, and bullies. Parents should be aware and responsible for their own children's health because sometimes the pressure it might come from them. Next, Plan a Home for the Future is a PSA campaign proposal intended for future society. The purpose of this campaign is to increase the number of trees in Earth by educating people the importance of plants and how to start plant at home and encourage them to do so. This campaign idea has inspired from the current Innisfree Green Forest campaign. Due to, the, due to the current pandemic situation, it triggers me the idea of planting at home. As you can see now, this is the overall Instagram layout for the campaign, the website layout for the campaign, a checkbook mock-up and a bunting mock-up in malls and the nearby areas. Last, Architectonic Studio is a client-based project and we are working as a team, who my teammates are Yingru and Haitam. The brief is to design a brand new look and feel and develop the brand collaterals. The design feel is minimalist and simple design, and the deliverable is shown above which in total got 10. And here are some examples that we are working on, which this is a business card example. And this is the e-signature banner mock-up. Those are the projects that I have done during my final year. If you are interested and want to get to know more about my work, feel free to contact me via email. Let's keep in touch and thanks for watching. Wow, those are some really cool projects, Han. Thank you.
Could you tell me a little bit more about the planning that went into your photography series? Oh, the planning. Actually, the planning is I need to first start is to find the best location for the shooting. Like, okay. for example, like wherever like high school students will be going and also wherever they will be staying, like for example, in your house, in the living room, or in their, in their room. So then after that, I will be finding like four, um, four, people, four students, which is uh, two males and two females, and, like inconsistent because of balancing of like two males and two females, because I need to propose okay. um, five images in total, which is one main image and four sub images. Okay. So for your second project, could you tell me what um, are the unique ways in which you would promote planting at home? Um, for the unique ways that planting at home, this one is actually I'm um, using uh, Instagram as the main platform to do the um, public awareness campaign. So um, Instagram inside there, they are actually the inside there is divided into four different phases. Well, the first phase is the launching one. The second one is the talking about importance of plants, and then the third one is the the third one is the main thing that actually will encourage people to do planting. Like for example, if uh, like in every twelve or twenty four hours, we'll be posting on uh, how how to start this planting at home, because um, when we realize that um, people are actually not quite interested when when there's like nobody teach them not how to do it. Okay, and for your last project with Architectonic, what was the reason you went into a more minimalist uh, approach? Um, for this one, actually, uh, this uh, minimalist uh, approach is actually from the client pitch by uh, Mr. Tan from okay. Academic Studio. Okay. Um, after that, we got that minimalist uh, approach. We actually do uh, research about the, some design reference, and after that, we do some sample design and then send it to him. Then, and also, or maybe on a second meeting with him, and like after the, all the developments will come until like, the final. Okay, that's really interesting. So maybe Sue says, Han, Opa, I'm your biggest fan. Yeah, thank you for that Hello. comment. Thank you. OK, so Han, thank you so much for being here. And thank you for presenting your project for oh, us. Thanks for having me. It was great to have you. So we will be back shortly with our next ABM student. Hi, we're back, and our next ABM student is Rehan, but he couldn't make it today. He's on his flight back to Indonesia, so we will play his video up next. Hello, everyone. My name is Muhammad Rehan Dwiananda. I'm 20 years old. I'm an Indonesian student from Asia Pacific University, Malaysia. They're taking major of advertising and brand management. So I have three major projects. The first one is called Safe Energy, Safe Future Generation. It is a public awareness campaign with an objective to encourage and educate the audience about saving energy and what is the benefit effect towards them. The proposed client of this project is Tanaga National Berhad. The second project is called Interactive Business Card. The client of this project is Kimochi Eatery. It is a Japanese restaurant based in Indonesia. The business card features Kimochi Eatery information brand identity, also their mascot name Kimi. As you can see, at the back of the business card, there is a QR code that will direct you to the Kimochi Eatery IG Twitter, and it also created by me. Yeah. So the last project is called MAPG, with the client of MAPG, or Malaysian Art Photography Group. And the main objective of this project is to rebranding the MAPG brand and come up with the different collateral identity. This project actually a group project, so my task is actually a lead designer of this project. So that's all. Thank you. Wow, I loved all of those projects, especially the business card for Kimochi. Thank you so much, Rehan, for sharing your projects with us. And I wish you all the best. Helena Roshni says, wish you were here with us at this exhibition, Rehan. We miss you so much. Thank you for sharing your projects. Joshua Chu says, ooh, interesting. Okay, next we will be moving into our diploma students, so we will be back shortly.
Hi, we're back. Next, we will be introducing our diploma students doing design and media. First, we have Nahil. Hi, Nahil. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you? That's great. I'm also great. So let's look at Nahil's video. Good morning, everyone. My name is Ibrahim Nahanashu, and I am a final year student doing my diploma in digital advertising in Asia Pacific Institute of Information Technology. And today I'm going to be talking about my project. So my project is basically taking a household product and rebranding or redesigning and having an interesting campaign around this. And for this, I have chosen a product that is not well known, but is readily available out there to make it more challenging, to make it a challenge for myself. And for that reason, I chose Ives from Ivy brand, which is a goat's milk product. And I have taken it and rebranded it to give customers a more trustable feeling around it because goat's milk itself is very beneficial to your skin. And when uh, people find out about it and when they see the packaging, it doesn't add up. So the whole goal of my campaign is to make a more trustable packaging design, which actually shows that it has the capabilities to actually help you and help your skin. So uh, I'll show you a showreel of my collaterals, which are my flyers. Uh, my Instagram posts, and then at the end of this uh, video, I'll show you my two advertisements that I did. One would be a YouTube ad, and the other one would be a story ad for Instagram. A uh, short introduction about myself. I come from a business background, and I'm doing this course just to add on to my skill set and to learn more about marketing, because marketing is the new finance, and that is the reason why I chose this. And Throughout this project to showcase my skill sets, I've used all the applications I know from Maya to Illustrator, Adobe InDesign, Photoshop, Premiere Pro, and even After Effects to show everything that I can do through one project itself. So I hope you enjoy the showreel. I'm always in my university and my skin tends to get dry. Actually, it's a bit dry. It's pretty dry and I have a lot of pimples. Because of my job, I feel my skin is too dry. This product really helped in my dry skin. You guys should try it. It's actually pretty good. Like my skin feels way better now. Now I have less pimples. Thanks, Ives. It's really good. It helped me a lot. And I really liked it. Wow, those were some amazing clips that we saw. Thank you so much for sharing. It looks like you put in a lot of effort into them. Yeah, it was really hard pulling them off in such a short amount of time. I'm sure. So what kind of softwares did you use for this project? For this project, I tried to put all my knowledge into it, literally everything. So I used wow. Maya, After Effects, Premiere Pro, Adobe Illustrator, Adobe Photoshop, InDesign, everything to complete wow. this project. That's amazing. So what was your inspiration behind this project? Uh, the inspiration behind this project is actually to, uh, we were supposed to take a household product and make a unique campaign around it, but for me to make it challenging, I took a product that a lot of people use, but they don't know that they're using it, which is Ives, a goat's milk product, and it has a lot of health benefits to the skin, so people didn't believe it because the packaging didn't look that good. So my whole purpose was to create a campaign which people could actually rely on this product and actually know that this is something that will actually help me 
in the future. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So for the future, what are your aspirations? I want. Uh, I come from a business background, so I want to put my skill sets that I've learned from here into more of my businesses and help them grow towards marketing as in finance, as I said in the video as well. So I want to work there, and I also plan to do my degree while working as well. Amazing. Thank you so much for sharing your stuff with us, Nahil. Now I will be passing on the floor to Nahil to introduce the rest of his class, so stay tuned. Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, my name is Nahil, as you've seen me before, and I'll be the moderator for the Diploma Batch. I'll be introducing our digital advertising, PD, animation, and VFX students who all could be here. And then um, with me right now is my close friend from my same batch, digital advertising, Miss Yano. Uh, her actual name is Chua Kailin, but we call her Yano. So why don't you give a short introduction about yourself? Um, where would you like me to start from? From wherever you are comfortable with. Uh, okay. Um, I'm a local Malaysian. Uh, I took digital advertising. Okay, and um, well, right now is my final project, and now uh, we're doing exhibition. So we're about to actually uh present our final project. Mm -hmm. And yeah. So how do you feel about your final project? Uh, how about we take a look at the final project before we talk about it? Um. Hello, today I'd like to show you my final project for a major project. But before I actually begin showing you my project, I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Kailin, I'm a local Malaysian. I'm a student in Asia Pacific Institute of Information Technology. And my project is about increasing brand awareness by using a household product that has the least um, brand exposure in the market. My collaterals are Instagram posts, Instagram story post, video commercial, and promotional item. The brand that I chose for my project is Intimate by NTPM. It's a sanitary napkin. The main color that I've been using in all of my designs are pink color because pink color represents feminine. And I use elements like cloud to represent comfort. I hope you enjoy my showreel. Thank you. Oh, wow, what a wonderful project. It's very nice. It has very nice color schemes. So would you like to go more into detail about your project and let the viewers know how you did it and why you did it the way you did it? Um, because since it's a sanitary um, napkin, it's mm -hmm. more towards um, female. So this is why I choose pink color. Because mm -hmm. um, pink is very feminine. Mm -hmm. And I did it so it's more according to a girl's taste. And... Um, I use a soft pastel color too, for a very, very um, soft texture like, yeah. Okay, so I can see that you put a lot of effort into it. Did you enjoy doing this production and did you find any hardships throughout the production? Yeah, I did enjoy it. Um, the only hardship that I actually have to go through is um, editing the video because I'm not very uh, familiar with video editing, so it was a challenge. 
Okay, okay, okay. So, what are your future aspirations? What are you planning to do after your diploma? Uh, more towards digital advertising. So basically, like um, promoting through social media platforms like Facebook, Instagram. Because I kind of think like right now, our current generation, um, most of the advertising that's been done is through the internet. So, which I find it very useful. Okay. So I wish you the best of luck for your future endeavors. Thank it was you. nice having you on board. Thank you. Hello, we are back, and I am with my very talented friend from my batch, Mr. Tanvir. Uh, he is from Industrial Design. So, why don't you give us a short introduction about yourself? Uh, hello, I'm Tanvir, and I am studying Industrial Design here. And um, it's it's been an aspiration of mine since childhood to design things and solve problems, and that's why I'm studying Industrial Design. Mm -hmm. I have seen some of your older works. He's put a lot of effort since young, and right now it's all coming to fruition. So how about we look into his product before we go into details? Wow, what a unique design. Would you like to explain to me what the product is and how its functionality is? The product is a portable garment steamer. Mm -hmm. uh, it's uh, the main aesthetic buildup of it was from Imperial Destroyer of Star Wars. Oh, wow. Yes, uh, it was an overall uh, experience buildup in terms mm -hmm. of like we wanted to make it look futuristic and give the experience of futurism in there. The overall design philosophy behind it was more minimalistic and modernism. And it was a challenging aspect in terms of how we wanted to package a lot of technologies into something that's so much more portable. Mm -hmm. Yes, and it was targeted towards people who, who move around a lot, like travelers and people who move or people who like to keep less stuff with them overall while living. The project, it started in a bit of a, it's, uh, it was started as a design project conceptually for home appliances. And then uh, when we further tried to redevelop it, it, there was this scope of making it portable and for people even who wants to travel. Mm -hmm. uh, there are certain kind of experimental technologies that we have employed to make it have certain features that are time relevant to this uh, era, mm -hmm. like per se disinfection systems, mm -hmm. so that uh, we can disinfect microbiological elements that are mm -hmm. potentially harmful for us. Uh, like we can see in current times, the COVID virus and everything. So it uses a UVC light uh, along with the electrostatic system mm -hmm. to kill those viruses. And apart from that, there are ecological things as well. Uh, we uh, to to make it further ecological, we employed a steam regeneration system mm -hmm. and uh, a reheating system uh, that can actually save electricity and usage of water. Oh, okay. Yes. You put a lot of thought into this, as I can see, not just about the product, but also to its functionality, to the environment, and to the people as well. So yes. what do you think, what are the plans after you are done with your degree, uh, diploma, sorry? Uh, I would like to move into degree, and my further plan is to actually go to master's level and understand what actually uh, product design, how it will move on to the future. I want to experience that and see that. Okay. A very good luck to your future endeavors. Thank you so very much, Nahil. Stay tuned. We are going to have our animation soon coming up. We, I have my friend, Mr. Hafez, coming up.
Welcome back with me. I have my very close friend. We've worked on multiple projects together, which were very fun. I have Hafiz with me. He's an animation student, and he has worked very hard on an animation to show us. So why don't you give a short introduction about yourself? Hello, I'm Hafiz. I'm a local from Penang. I decided to enroll in this university because my brother also enrolled here for animation. He said it's quite good, so that's why I also enrolled here. Mm. Okay, so why don't we look at this animation first and then we'll talk a little bit more about it. Hello, my name is Mark Hafiz Pinzaghi and I am studying in Asia Pacific University for Diploma in Design and Media. In this video, I will be talking about my animation, The Hybrid Pencil Box, which is based on the theme, Object Comes to Life. I'll be going through its concept, idea generation, and its key highlights. Let's go. The goal of the project is to produce a one-minute animation from the theme, Object Comes to Life. Students will need to draw various objects and choose an object which will then be used for the animation. The object I had chosen for the animation was a pencil box. The idea was that the pencil box would eat the stationaries hiding throughout the room. From there, I created the various characters which will then be used for the animation. Each of the characters were based off what I had. With the characters done, I proceeded to doing the rough animations and then clean up afterwards. As I was slightly behind schedule, I opted to use various ways that would fasten my production speed. I decided to use my iPad for the cleaning up phase as it would be much more accurate by drawing on the screen rather than coordinating my hand and eye movement using the Wacom. Some of the highlights of my animation were the use of various perspectives. As I wanted to allow the audience to be immersed into the animation, I figured having different perspectives would allow that to happen. The clips were then compiled and edited with sounds at the end. Thank you. Wow, what an interesting animation I just saw. That was such a unique idea. How did you actually come up with such an idea? The idea came from since we always lose our own stationaries. I figured that having a pencil box going around eating the stationaries would be interesting to see. Quite unique indeed. So how did you actually animate it? I, I've heard that animation is quite hard. I personally haven't done it much, but how, how was the experience of creating such a unique animation? It was fun, quite fun. The animation was kind of hard for, to, well, hard to manage, but overall it was quite fun to do. Mm -hmm. Okay, so did the, the MCO have any effect on you for this production or did it cause any problems for you during this animation? Mostly because, yes, it did. Uh -huh. Because the uh, my laptop is not capable of handling most of the pressure since I have to run a lot of programs on it. So you used a lot of programs to make this animation. Would you like to tell us more about that? The main animating software is uh, Toon Boom Harmony. I did almost all, all the animating on there and then the editing on uh, Premiere Pro. Mm, okay, okay, okay. So where, where do you see yourself in the future? What do you plan to do after this? I haven't really thought much into it yet, but I plan to do mostly animation work. If possible, maybe some illustration work also. All right. So well, very good luck to you for your future endeavors. And stay tuned. Up next is another animation student, Paryu, my close friend. So stay tuned. Welcome back with me. I have my friend Faryu, uh, partner in crime, uh, animator. More than once in his life, he has told me that animation literally runs in his blood. So uh, why don't you give a short introduction about yourself? Hello, my name is Arifar Muhammad, and uh, commonly I'm known as Aiko in my local art community back in my country, which is Maldives. And 
making art is always been my childhood passion and especially animation like i always wanted to make cartoons and this is basically a dream come true because i just released my first animation short and the feedback has been really nice and i want to talk about a little bit about the process that went behind it so you can play the video yes let's see it hey there my name is ali farah muhammad and here i'm going to talk about my short animation second peanut second peanut is basically a tribute to my childhood as a kid i love watching cartoons like tom and jerry Johnny Bravo, Samurai Jack, Powerpuff Girls, and one of my favorites, Dexter's Laboratory. Considering the time frame that was given to us to complete the animation, my goal was to come up with a workflow and a pipeline that will allow me to create high quality animation. To prove this, I, I have created a montage video that will showcase some of the behind the scenes. So please enjoy. Thank you. Based on the concept art, I was able to recreate the 2D visuals in a 3D environment in Blender in real time using a tone shader. This allowed me to explore the set, find good camera angles and create dynamic camera movements. This allowed me to create the action sequences of the shot. The workflow allowed me to combine traditional 2D animation with 3D animation. This was done by combining the footage rendered in Blender and then taken into Harmony for the 2D animation. Using the node compositor in Harmony, I was able to add up one of the many methods that can be used by an artist to color the characters and apply highlights and shadows at a faster rate. For the scenes that were not part of the 3D environment, I rendered the basic look of the scene in Blender, which I would paint over in Photoshop, which is then taken into Harmony. Once the animation is done, this is further polished in After Effects by adding various effects. Working on this project has allowed me to level up my skills in different artistic areas and it has also given me a clear idea of what career path I should pursue in the future, where I will be focusing more in visual development and animation. My goal is to further enhance on the workflow I learned during this project and most important of all, learn from all the mistakes that were done and improve on them in the future. Thank you. Wow. What an amazing job. Thank I, you. Thank you. Thank I you. see all the sleepless nights have finally paid off. Yeah, that is, is the evidence mm -hmm. of that. So uh, I get a very Oggy and the Cockroaches vibe from it. Was that part of your inspiration as well? Yeah, one of the uh, inspiration for me was the early cartoons of the 90s. And I can even take it a bit further back to cartoons like Tom and Jerry and Looney Tunes. And I grew up watching these cartoons. And Tom and Jerry was one of the biggest inspiration. Visually, uh, the biggest inspiration came from Dexter's laboratory because I was always found that simple art style really fascinating, especially the character design and the way they would use uh, audio to convey the story without actually using the dialogue in cartoons like Lo Looney Tunes and Tom and Jerry was uh, really, really fascinating for me. And the target audience for this ca cartoon was basically uh, to make a cartoon for my younger self, but at the same time, evoke nostalgia in adults who grew up watching cartoons like Tom and Jerry and Looney Tunes and all of that. Yeah, that was the goal. That was the main goal of this. I see a lot of blood and sweat have yeah, been put into this animation. So basically, it's a tribute to my childhood, to any kid who grew up watching cartoons like that. Okay, so can we expect to see more of these animations in the future? Hopefully, because. Um, I created this uh, animation as a, as the first episode of anthology series, which I'm calling or stories from my imaginative mind, where I can actually uh, tell different various uh, sto short stories, which is targeted for the younger audience about different or characters in different scenarios. And I actually have the second episode already planned, and I'm going to release it on my own as an independent animator in the future. And hopefully I'll release it in a social media platforms like Instagram and YouTube. And maybe I'll create a Facebook uh, group, uh, page also for that. So good luck for your future animation and endeavors and hope to see more of your work. Thank Stay you. tuned, we are gonna have the next and final animation soon with Hafez coming up.
Welcome back. I am here with my very tall friend, Hafez. How are you doing, Hafez? I'm fine. How are you? I'm good. So, uh, Hafez has made a very interesting animation as well. Uh, so, would you like to give us a slight introduction about yourself? Yeah. So, my name is Hafez Azimdisha. I'm uh, from Iran. I worked on this animation for about three months. Uh, the theme of our animation was Object Comes to Life. So, basically, we had to initially draw out different objects and then develop them into characters for our final animation. All right? Yeah. Mm. Let's look at his animation now, shall we? Hi, my name is Hafez Azimineja. I'm studying in Diploma in Design and Media. In this video, I will be talking about my final animation, Bank Heist, which is based around the theme, Object Comes to Life. I'm going to be walking you through the concept and the idea generation and the key highlights of the project. Let's go. In the beginning of the project, the goal was to create characters out of objects and then animate them in a story based on different genres that the students pick. The length of the final animation is one minute. The initial phases of the idea and the concept development would involve sketching different objects and developing them into the final characters. In this phase, the drawings were very rough and the idea for the animation was born. The character for the finals are drawn with simplistic elements with thick outlines and simple colors. The character development process was done based on the requirement for the animation and the final characters being staplers as the protagonists, spray can and knife as the antagonists of the story. With the goal of achieving a minute short, the backgrounds of the scenes were finalized. However, due to having problem with perspective, using 3D modeling in Maya, the base structure of the scene is created and used as a reference for the animation. Some of the highlights in the key stages of the animation process in the project were the use of similar backgrounds for the scenes with different characters present. At the end of the project, the animated clips were compiled together and the sound effects were added. Thank you. Wow, what a unique animation. Mm -hmm. How did you come up with such an idea? Uh, so the initial idea was to come up with an animation that would involve comedy and action together. So my initial storyline was uh, about the character being robbed. However, that developed into bank robbery, and I needed different characters for that. So I develop the characters into two staplers as the guards of the bank and uh, the robbers being the spray can and the knife as the oh very interesting how do you think the staplers would be the guards Was it kind of like a gun inspiration from staplers uh yeah so i needed characters that would be able to shoot and uh, like in the development stages i didn't really find a suitable object for that and with the help of uh, my lecturers I would uh, be developing it into the staplers that are being able to shoot the. Yeah. Okay. Did you so? Did you face any hardships during this MCO? Was there any issues in your production or anything that you faced? Oh, uh, definitely. Yeah, I faced quite a bit of problems. One being that I am not really good at drawing. So using modeling, as suggested by my lecturer, I could get the right perspectives in my scenes, as you saw in the video. All right, so what do you plan to do after this, after your animation, after this diploma is done? Uh, I'm planning to either work or I'm going to work on my portfolio as a concept artist and uh, hope to develop that into a career in the future. So uh, very good luck to you on becoming a concept artist mm -hmm. in your future. Thank you for being such a good guest. So that wraps it up for our diploma batch and as well for this entire Infinite Beyond exhibition the past two days have been excellent you guys have been a wonderful audience and we are still going on today if you guys are in kl please do come and visit us at level three for diploma and degree exhibition there have been many people coming in there are a lot of amazing works here that you can see thank you for being a wonderful audience hope to see you here and have a great day